I have seen Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa up close. I've never been to the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. I stood under President Theodore Roosevelt's nose at Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I've never been to South Dakota. I rode through Bristol, Tennessee, and raced two laps on the iconic Bristol Motor Speedway with Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> I've never met Dale Earnhardt Jr. What made these experiences possible? Virtual reality. Can you imagine being a student able to go to the ancient Egyptian pharaoh King Tut's tomb, walk along the same path archaeologists did when they first discovered the tomb untouched? Can you imagine being a medical student able to travel through veins and the human heart seeing the cells in action while its functions being explained to you in detail? Can you imagine being a student, learning a second language, being able to converse with native speakers without leaving the classroom? These are the opportunities virtual reality gives our students today. Why should we care about virtual reality in the educational environment? Why should we care about this technology when what we're already doing in the classroom works well for us? It's because virtual reality is not the next best thing. It is the thing. It's here now. It's all around us. Technology companies are racing to incorporate virtual reality into their current applications. Facebook paid $2.3 billion to acquire the virtual reality company called Oculus. Smartphone maker HTC moved to mainly focus on the development of its Vive virtual reality headset. Amazon created its virtual reality developer platform, Samaria. Virtual reality is changing the way we work, learn, and socialize, and it will revolutionize the world of education. But what is virtual reality? Virtual reality is a computer-generated environment. The environment can either be completely man-made or created from real-life photos or videos. It is immersive. You feel like you're a part of the scene. The user temporarily suspends his or her beliefs and accepts that they're a part of the environment. We have different types of devices that can connect us to virtual reality. Virtual reality can be accessed with a headset connected to a computer, a standalone headset, a head mount for a smartphone, or directly from a smartphone. The impact of the immersion may vary depending on the device used to access the virtual environment. It can be known as full immersion when you have an experience that's almost as real as actually being there. For example, when I experienced the Mona Lisa, I was able to view the painting from all angles on the wall, but with a click of a hand controller, I was able to go inside the painting view the model Mona Lisa as she was being painted. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a, a less immersive experience. In these experiences, the user is able to have full view of the environment, but is not able to control or change the environment. For example, when I was riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr., I could see how fast I was going and all of the surroundings but I couldn't grab the steering wheel or jam my foot on the gas pedal. The biggest market today for virtual reality are the entertainment and gaming industries. The biggest potential for virtual reality is the education sector. Stanford University professor 
Jeremy Balenson explained, virtual reality is not the same as other forms of media. The mind tends to treat virtual reality closer to an actual experience. There is an educational method called embodied learning. This method combines using abstract concepts and actual physical experiences. It's a theory that sensory motor engagement can lead to increased learning retention. Virtual reality supports this method by bridging the physical and the technological. The big names in virtual reality, Oculus and HTC, are working on their uses of the technology in the classroom as we speak. There are big challenges ahead. Firstly, the cost of the equipment. One HTC Vive headset costs $500. And the high-powered computer used to run the software and the device is about $1,000. The second is practicality. Due to the high price of the equipment, it makes it difficult to scale. The third is awareness. The latest statistics show that 51% of Americans are aware of virtual reality. However, this does not translate into true users of the technology. The technology has awareness, but not a strong user base. The price of the equipment is consistently decreasing. And this could lead to greater usage in and out of the classroom. As the technology gets cheaper, the possibility to scale in the classroom increases. Since we need virtual reality in education today, and the technology exists, is there anything we can do to expedite its adoption? so that students can begin using it as soon as possible. As Moore's law predicts, computer processing speed doubles about every two years. Technology is developing faster than we can keep pace. What makes virtual reality different from artificial intelligence or blockchain is that the technology exists now. Virtual reality is not a movie or fiction. The opportunities that we have now will only increase as time moves forward. In 2007, Apple came out with the iPhone, which revolutionized the smartphone world. In 2013, this was when the majority of the US own smartphones. Now 70% of internet usage is done with mobile devices. In 2009, Uber was founded. In less than 10 years, the taxi industry all over the world has been changed. In 2014, Facebook acquired the virtual reality company Oculus. Earlier this year, Oculus released its low-cost, $199 virtual reality headset, the Oculus Go. In November of this year, a company called Red Digital Cinema will release the world's first holographic smartphone called the Hydrogen One. How will this change the, the smartphone world? We don't know. The future is now. Virtual reality is like Netflix before it became the Netflix we know now. We need to take a student-centric approach to virtual reality. This answers why virtual reality will benefit students. 
It's a call to action, a call to action for students, not for virtual reality technology, educators, and virtual reality firms. Initially, I was skeptical about virtual reality in the classroom until I actually saw how practical the technology is today and what an impact it can make on our students' learning. What it can do today, which will only become more efficient and advanced in a blink of an eye. The ones that will lose are the students. Every time I saw a video or a TED talk on the subject of virtual reality, I was skeptical as well until I began using the technology. I have seen businesses use virtual reality technology to replace job functions. We live in a world where technology is advancing and changing faster than we can adapt. It can be overwhelming. How can we manage? I, when I began researching and learning virtual reality, it became overwhelming. I'm not a technology expert or a computer programmer. I'm an accounting professor. The current technology, as we know it, is less than a decade old. And there are so many nuanced areas of use cases, hardware and software, I could not keep up. Overwhelmed or not, one thing is more than apparent, that virtual reality offers our students an extraordinary ability to learn and experience in ways that were not possible before, but are possible now. Our role as educators is twofold. On one hand, we prepare our students for the future world when they graduate. On the other hand, we need to offer our students the opportunities that exist now. Thank you.